you had the Bucks and the Pacers tipping this thing off, and boy, it it just seems like seemed like neither team wanted to play defense at one point of this game. Uh, a frenetic pace, and you know, it, it, in the end, it, once again, the Pacers, led by their maestro Tyrese Halliburton, out executed the Bucks, despite yeah. the despite the Bucks. Uh, you know, because coming out of the half, Pacers were up by like. 12 13 Bucks score 43 points in the third but then get outscored 18 to 7 in crunch time and Halliburton and those boys pull away man Halliburton 27 points 15 dimes zero assists Al what you think about this game I thought the Pacers game was just fantastic CP I, I really enjoyed it thoroughly uh we got to see two offenses really duke it out and this was a big question coming into this game was that could the Pacers compete with two elite level talents in Damian Lillard and Giannis Antetokounmpo and just Tyrese Halliburton and a bunch of role players. That's why I tweeted out CP. They were able to keep pace with the Milwaukee Bucks and get the timely stops that they needed and the timely scoring they needed by their star Tyrese Halliburton. That was a great showing. And I think if you're looking at it from the Pacers perspective, because they are the winner, I want to give them their shine. If you're watching the Pacers right now, they are on quite an offensive tear right now. And they're also on like a successful role as a unit CP with this game, with this game, with the in-season tournament play that has happened here. The, the Pacers are six and zero in their in-season tournament play. You know that they, this is, this is who they defeated. They defeated the Cavs 121, 116. Then they defeated the 76ers 132 to 126. Then they defeated the Hawks 157 to 152. After that, the Pistons 136 to 113. They defeated the Celtics earlier this week, 122 to 112. And now you defeated the Milwaukee Bucks, 128 to 119. Six and oh, in in-season tournament play. That is impressive considering the list of teams they had to face. You're talking about three teams that have been considered top of the East CP with the Sixers, Celtics, and Bucks. The the Indiana Pacers are making quite a scene right now throughout the entire NBA. And they're showing that defense doesn't really matter. You know, offense is like, we're fine just with our high powered offense defense. We can get the stops when we need it, but it, it, it's, it's just spectacular to watch the Pacers do so. And it's all because of Tyrese Halliburton. As we saw last season, this team was competitive in playoff mix until he got injured. Now he is back healthy and he came off a knee injury. Remember that he came off a knee injury to face the Celtics. And he's just, it's like he came back with a vengeance this season because he wants to prove to everybody, look, you've only given me two primetime games. I'm special. We got something cooking here in, in, in Indy. Put some respect on our names, especially when you see how he did Dame time. What time is it? Forget Dame time. Love, it's all I about me, it. man. It's all about me. I uh, loved everything uh, about it. I, I loved it, man. Um, what, what Number one thing I love about Halliburton right now is he talks to talk and he's walking to walk. All, all in this whole entire in-season tournament, he's been playing with a chip on his shoulder. He wants the Pacers in that conversation. He wants respect for his team. Uh, you know, he, he's tired of losing, as, as he talked about. He he wants to treat this like a playoff-type atmosphere. And then he's going out there and backing it up, Al. I mean, the last two games, Boston game, 26 points, 10 rebounds, 13 assists. His first triple-double, which was an incredible surprise, zero turnovers. This game against Mil Milwaukee, 27 points. 15 assists, zero turnovers, seven rebounds. In his last 10, he's averaging 29.6, so say 30, 12.4 assists, and 1.9 turnovers. 53% from the field, damn near 54, and 46% from downtown. Al, if these aren't MVP caliber numbers, I don't know what is. And you look at the way that he's transformed this team, he is the very definition of MVP, the number one offense in the league right now, highest in, in points per game, the efficiency in which they run their, in, in which he runs their offense and in which he's able to score out of. And then on top of that, being able to take care of the ball. I mean, if you think about the amount of possessions that they have in a game and still third in the league right now in turnovers per game, how careful they run that offense and protect the ball and don't waste possessions. That is incredible. And, and that is why when, when you talk about 
playoffs and, and beyond and whether they can compete with the with the defense that they have, I think they can for, for a multitude of reasons. Number one, you just stated, look at the quality of wins that they had on this journey. Philly, in Philly. They beat the Celtics in crunch time. They beat the Bucks in crunch time, neutral court. I mean, they're finding different ways to win and they're building quality, quality, quality victories behind him who's playing at an MVP level. They take care of the ball. And then and and then on top of that, all these wins are giving them confidence. And that's what's going to make this team even more dangerous because they don't fear anybody. They feel like they can beat anybody. And so, you know, the defensive thing is, is going to be something to watch all year. But maybe it's just the fact that, you know, timing. Can they get the timely stops? And when they make the playoffs, anything can happen, right? They may go from the 26th ranked defense to maybe something decent and decent enough in the playoffs where it can carry them far, especially with the way that they're, they're playing offense. Shout out to our guy, Andrew, the one, two combo. He talks about, look, if you have like an average defense and you have a high powered offense, which he was talking about for the bucks, can't wait to talk about this with you next week, Andrew can't yeah. wait for next Wednesday. But uh, look, when you talk, when you think that if you can get timely stops for this team and you have miles Turner, who is really killing, improved. killing he, miles improved, Turner man. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. He's improved, and even his whole demeanor, man, he's gone from being just like this, like for Mitchell Robinson, like as we cover the Knicks, like from being like this guy who's a little quirky, has a little moments where he could be a little goofy, and purposely so, just to be funny and just bring levity to the room. You you see his demeanor, it's all about business right now. You look at Aaron Naismith, it's all about business right now. I mean, CP, let's also keep it real. Like this team has gotten a bunch of characters a cast of characters that have been throwaways, right? You talk about Jalen yeah. Smith. You talk about Aaron Naismith. You talk about Obi Toppin. All these guys are now playing for something. You talk about Tyrese Halliburton, who was a castaway himself from Sa the Sacramento Kings, right? Think about how felt far he fell into the draft, which everyone now likes to bring up, where it's like you have 11 other, you have eleven teams that passed on him, and there are questions like, well, you took like uh, James Wiseman, right? If you're the Warriors, you could have had Halliburton, right? Like th these are all things that you look back now. It's they're all playing with a chip on their shoulder and they're all trying to prove something. And with this team right now, the way that they're playing, it just says that, I mean, look at buddy heel too. throw buddy heel buddy. in there, buddy. right? He's playing really well. This entire team has a chip on their shoulder. They're trying to make some noise. They're trying to show that, Hey, other teams didn't believe in us. Other teams didn't give us the right, the right fair shake. Let's show us. Let's show them that we're special. And we got something cooking here. And look, you got to shout out to Rick Carlisle, man, because Big this is a, you, you, the way that he's running this team and allowing each player to be themselves. Like he's not asking them to do something that they're not capable of doing, right? He's asking, mm -hmm. like, "Hey, I need you to do this, but I want you to flourish as who you are, right?" And the fact that you have a bunch of guys, even like a TJ McConnell, who can step up at any moment when someone goes down, like a Nebhard, That's this team is 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 interesting, man. I think it's a nice, fun story for what you got. I, I know it's a small market team too, and I know Adam Silver's got to be thrilled about that. Yeah. Um, Pacers really making a name for themselves. I know some people are just like, it's an in season tournament. How how's that even? What does it even matter? This is a kind of this is a yeah. glimpse to what the playoffs is going to look like, guys. Like, yeah. I'm not saying that you know they're going to win a series or anything like that, but this chippiness, this type of level of play. I, I don't think competition has been raised. Slow down, but there's it's confidence, but it's also there, there's something real here. They're not just doing that. It doesn't seem like it's a flash in the pan because that offense is staying consistent. CP, it's staying yeah, consistent. Yeah. Well, they're you know they're, they're all flowing behind Halber. He he's the straw that makes the whole thing go because it allows everybody to play their role and play their position and just be ready. I mean, look at the passes that he was throwing out there last night. Super unconventional, very unorthodox, even his jumper completely unorthodox. But that's just him. That's just how he rolls, man. And to see him performing like that, doing what he did in crunch time, it's 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 incredible. And, you know, they're getting contributions from everybody. As you mentioned, Miles Turner himself. You know, we talk about Halliburton. Miles Turner had 26, 9 to 18 shooting, 10 rebounds, three blocks in this game. You had 10 from Bruce Brown, who hit a big shot, uh, who had a big, big steal. And um and and uh forced a the, the putback lay in by um I think that was that was uh Matherin in the end when the Bucks kind of turned it over. He had OB with 14. How about the dunk from half court? That was insane. insane. Um 
their bench players, you know, Neesmith playing with a chip on his shoulder. I'm loving the way that he's playing defense, taking on the challenge. He's going up against Tatum the night, the game before. He's going up against Giannis. No airspace. He's playing physical. And the refs, for the most part, you know, they were letting him go. Some yep. of the more egregious ones, they're like, all right, slow down. You got to relax a little bit. But they were they were letting him letting him get some travel on TJ McConnell. <laughs> that way up. Yeah. But but speaking of which, TJ McConnell, you know, the, the most annoying player in the NBA, nine points, four dimes, three steals off the bench. Incredible. I thought Nebhard gave them some really, really good minutes, mm-hmm. especially in the third quarter. It was unfortunate that they lost him to injury. And then you have Matherin, you know, their start kind of allows Matherin a high lottery pick to kind of flow under the radar, do his thing and build his confidence up while the team is still competing. So I I think they're in, um, they're they're in a really good spot, man. And and then with Halliburton, it's like, I'm watching him and, you know, we talk about the, the classic point guard play is, is almost a dying breed. And then you watch him play, man. Like we haven't seen this since probably haven't seen it since Nash and that's a while. Yeah. Last, I mean, the oil, the guy who's still active in the league, who's, you know, getting close to the end of his career is Chris Paul as like the last true floor general, but Halliburton, the way he moves, man, it, it is just, you said it earlier in the show, CP, this is MVP caliber play by a point guard. And it's, it's, I, I'm going to say Nash because Nash, you know, two time winner of that, of that award. And, it's stuff that Nash does, man. Moving at a high pace, knowing how to move in transition, know how to attack the half court, constantly looking for his guys, elevating their level of play. I mean, the fact that, you know, you just go back and think about uh, the Nash and Stoudemire days. I mean, you got that, Hal Burton, you got uh, Turner, anybody. He finds anybody. It makes him look get, look great, man. And wow. Uh, I, I just want to see this. I, I, I'm, I'm so curious to see how the season unfolds, man, for this team because – it's a nice story, like I said, right now. And they're still leading the league, CP. Yeah. We're at the quarter season mark. They're still leading the league in points, like 128. And the next team is 122. This is the highest scoring offense, highest scoring offense right now in the NBA if it was to end today. And look, you can go back to the 80s where everyone high scoring was just prominent too. But this is just on another level. In today's NBA where I know they're trying to promote scoring, but the the pace that they move at CP, it is just insane. It's crazy. I, I'm I need this this entire season. They're they're truly a case study for like this entire season if they can keep this up. Absolutely, and you know you look at the roster construction. They're tailor made for the system, starting with Halliburton. Then you go into they have the athleticism with Obi, and you know they've got Mather, and they they got Nebhard. They have these guys like they have Turner, they have three point shooting, Buddy Heald and Turner, uh, Bruce Brown. They got scrappers with, with Brown and and McConnell, Nebhard off the bench. I mean, they're tailor made for that offense, and and now with that secondary cast that I, I noted, they're getting after it on the hustle points too. I mean, they won the rebounding battle last night against a big Bucks team, which was a surprise. Um, and then, you know, 23 to 16 second chance points, they beat the Bucks. How about this? Points in the paint, 74 to 60 Woo. in this one. And then uh, they won the fast break battle, 11 to 7. So, you know, they, they have the pieces there. They're believing themselves. The confidence level is through the roof. And they're going to be dangerous, man. Let, let's pull up this tweet from Bobby Marks, who uh, gave a little – Gave a little diagram into or a little look into what the the assets in the war chest looks like with the Indiana Pacers. Lowest payroll in the NBA. 9.7 in cap space to absorb salary. Wow. 14 players earning between 2 to 22 million. Up to (laughs) five tradable firsts. 10 seconds available and potential to have max room in 2024. In a great spot. Great spot. Great spot. And if you're thinking of if you're the Pacers and you're looking to add this offseason or even by the deadline CP, maybe see you got Toronto in the wings. Think about it. You got Toronto in the wings, man. Like they they have no idea what they're going to do. You got players that you got yeah. three players in OG and OB, Gary Trent Jr. and uh Pascal Siakam that could potentially all be out of there in one offseason. And if you're the if you're the Raptors who are not a good team right now, like you got talent, you're trying to build around Scotty Barnes. And you're someone like the Indiana Pacers, and you're like, hey, we need to add defense. Let's see what OG Ananobi's. Let's see if we can get OG Ananobi. Let's see if we can get Pascal Siakam. Hey, why not try both? 
You know what I mean? Yeah, and and yeah. that's go that will be the interesting part of the season, I think. Do the Pacers make a move in season or do they rock with what they have right now and not ruin the good vibes that they have? Because they're fifth in the East right now, CP. They just passed the Knicks. Um, even though they have the same record. But uh it's that's what I'm looking out for. Are they gonna make an in season move or are they gonna ride yeah. it out and then do something in this offseason? Yeah, gonna be left gonna be left to be seen, man. I mean, you certainly have to like the pieces that they have right now, but if they do have the ability to go upgrade and, and get Caliburton uh another running mate, I mean they're they're in a great position to strike right now. You know, and they can absorb some salary. So they they may want to take on a you know a, a ballooned contract who's on an expiring deal just to help, whether it's whether you know it's defense or adding to what they already have. So they're they're in a great position. And, you know, we're going to get into our, our finals preview, but I got a hard time picking against this team, man. I mean, beating Boston, beating this Milwaukee team, uh, the, the Pacers, they're, they're just on a mission, man. So I have a hard time doing that. Uh, on the Buck 